Controversy number two is going to happen when negative signs get mixed in with our exponents. And how we extract meaning in the order of operations from the combination of those two things. So because this number seven has a division sign in it, I don't particularly like it as an example. Um, so what I think I'd like to do with it, by the way, did anybody, uh, did anybody get through number seven? So what was your process to get to the number negative 17? What was the first thing you did here? First Okay. Great. So you did two squared first and ended up with four. I'm going to put parentheses around that. And then... Okay. Great. So you did multiplication from left to right, um, which means you would have... Well, the, okay, so there's another multiplication here, the 5 and the 4, right? That if I make that explicit, then I've got 9 times 2 divided by 6 minus 5 times 4. If we trade out this division for multiplication, that way we put all of the multiplications in this first term on the same footing, 9 times 2 times 1 sixth minus 5 times 4. Now we're, again, following the Pima structure, where now all I have is multiplication, so it doesn't matter if I do them from left to right or what. So 9 times 2 gives me 18, times 1 sixth, 18 times 1 sixth, yeah, 18 over 6, exactly. Again, following the multiplication of fractions, which goes straight across, right? I'm going to get 18 over 6, which I can reduce to 3 over 1, which is just another name for the whole number 3. So finishing over here, that first term is going to give me a 3. And then I have 5 times 4, my other multiplication. I have to finish all my multiplications before I worry about the subtraction. And now at the end, 3 minus 20 gives me negative 17. Yeah, again, if we want to be extra careful about, it, it really makes the biggest difference when I have more than one addition or subtraction happening in the same expression. Here, we only really have one subtraction sign. So typically, I don't take this extra step, but it's worth the practice. Right? 3 plus negative 20, that gives me negative 17. Because again, when we talked about adding sign numbers uh, last week, um, when I add two numbers that have opposite signs, negative 20 and positive 3. That's how I know that it's really a subtraction problem. Right? And the, the value of my answer is going to be the difference, 20 minus 3, 17. And why is it negative 17 instead of positive? Right. The 20, the, the negative number here, has the bigger absolute value. And so the sign of the sum is the sign of the number which had the bigger absolute value in, in the original problem. So negative 17 is the correct answer. Very good. Um, so where I want to shine the spotlight real quickly is on that first step here, right? that I have 2 squared, and I'm turning that into a 4. Right? That's because what is this exponent of 2 here really being applied to? It's really just being applied to that 2. Right? Because the order of operations takes precedence for exponents over multiplication, which means that this multiplication happening between the 5 and the parentheses here, that doesn't happen. That 5 just hangs out while the exponent thing is happening. And then once the exponent thing has happened, then the multiplication kicks in. That happens every time multiplication and exponents mix, but it's sometimes a little bit more subtle to catch. Uh, and that's what number 9 is going to illustrate. So in number 9, um, first of all, there's two different sets of parentheses going on in this expression. So where do we want to go first to begin evaluating? the parentheses that are the furthest in, right? The, the, the one that are surrounded by the most other sets of parentheses. Um, so this set on the inside, the 2 minus 5, is where we'll go first. Um, the 2 minus 5 inside is going to give me a negative 3. So I'm going to have that squared multiplied by 2. I've got a 4 out there. That whole thing... By the way, brackets, for us, for our purposes, brackets and parentheses right now mean the same thing. They're just another type of grouping. Um, they're used here to just make it easier on the I so that we don't have to use two sets of parentheses that look identical. Um, this is sort of the brackets here are kind of the outer level grouping, and the parentheses are the inner level grouping. So now my question is, what happens here? 2 times negative 3 squared. 
Right. So again, there's this secret multiplication sign in between the two in the parentheses. And so we know from the order of operations that that multiplication can't happen until after the exponent happens. So then I'll ask, what is actually that exponent being applied to? It's being applied to, well, what's being squared here? The negative 3. And what does it mean to square the number negative 3? Multiply it by itself. So what do I multiply? Negative 3 times negative 3. And when I multiply negative 3 times negative 3, the result is positive 9. So you can already see where there's a huge potential for sign mistakes in this work. So that becomes a positive 9. And then I'll put the rest of the stuff in around it. 4 plus 2 times 9. Put some brackets. Minus 3. So we knew that the negative 3 was getting multiplied by a negative 3 because that negative here is inside the parentheses. So it's part of the number that's getting squared. Right? That negative is attached to the 3. And the whole result is getting squared, which is why it ends up being positive. And then from here, I think we can agree on what the next steps are. Right? This multiplication is going to happen. And then this addition is going to happen. And then everything inside the parentheses is done. And then we'll do the subtraction and be finished. So I'm just going to abbreviate those steps. 2 times 9 is going to give me 18. 4 plus 18 is going to give me 22. Uh, the, the brackets, the parentheses, will no longer be necessary. And I'll end up with 19. Yeah. That's the other thing, too, is that brackets, for us right now, in this context, in the context of an algebraic formula, brackets and parentheses really are the same type of object. Right? So we treat them just like we do parentheses. And once the only thing on the inside of a set of parentheses is a single number that's already totally simplified, then it doesn't matter whether the parentheses are there or whether they're not there or whether we do as you suggested and imagine there to be a 1 out in front of it and treat it like a multiplication problem, 1 times 22, which then also serves the function of just erasing the parentheses. Right? So yeah, great question. Once that number is alone on the inside of parentheses, then we're really just multiplying it by 1 and then waving the parentheses away. Most common source of error in these problems are sign errors attached to the squaring of a negative number. Right? Uh, so when we had to stop and, and catch ourselves and say, wait, this is really negative 3 times negative 3, which means the result is positive, that's the step that when people are, when you're doing this quickly on a quiz or on an exam or when you're just sort of, you know, when your brain isn't fully engaged in the work, which it happens. Um, it happens for me sometimes in front of the class that you'll miss that negative sign, uh, or you'll accidentally <laughs> carry through too many negative signs uh, into your work. And so that's where I actually want to turn the conversation next, uh, because this was the controversy that arose for me five or six years ago over in math services across the street, with students coming in and saying, my professor says x, my math professor says y, who's right? And it was problems like these that generated the controversy. So we just did, on the last screen, this problem here negative 3 inside parentheses being squared. Right? And you all told me correctly that that means that we're multiplying negative 3 by itself. And so the result is positive 9. And so where the controversy was coming in is that the, I want to say it was an economics professor now, just so I can change my story, um, was giving his students this expression with a minus a 3 and a squared, but without the parentheses. And the economist or chemist, or whoever it was, was saying that it was the same thing as this. But of course, their math professor was telling them it was something different. So to ease our way into this, why would in our class, in our math class, why would we say that this is something different from that? What's the only possible explanation for why these two things <coughs> might not be the same? Yeah. The only possible source of disagreement is what happens first, the squaring or the negativing, which is not a word, but it is now for the next half an hour. It's a word. Um, so is the negative happening first, or is the square happening first? Um, I like to explain this often just using English. I like using English once in a while. Um, what we really have here is three words. Negative, if we just read from left to right, negative, three, and squared. Both of these expressions, if we are reading them, and by the way, when we read things, I think this is true in cognitive science. Whenever we read things, 
um, there's a little teeny tiny, usually inaudible voice inside of our head that's reading the words uh, in our brain as we're going, like reading them out loud, even if it's silently. Like we can hear words in our brain as we're reading text. Right? And the same is true with, with math expressions, right? If I read this in my mind's ear, I hear negative three squared. But there's a difference in that expression where we put the comma. Right? If I put the comma in the front here, or if I put the comma in the back, right there. Um, I've kind of done this a little bit backwards. Let me put it, let me switch the order. So if I put the comma here, then what is that suggesting? If I make my brain take a pause in between three and squared, then what is actually being squared in the first sentence? Negative three is being squared. In other words, negative three is being multiplied by itself. Negative three times negative three, that gives me positive nine. So that first version of the sentence is what we have up here. Negative three times negative three. But the second version of the sentence, what's actually getting squared? Three. The three is getting squared, and then the result of that is being made negative. And a mathematician would say, that is what this second version of this expression really indicates. That the negative is standing aside while the squaring happens, and then only after the squaring has happened will we worry about the negative. So to sort of write out in detail what that looks like, right? that looks like this negative just hanging out and the three being squared. And one of the reasons we can interpret it that way so here the answer would not be 9, but it would be negative 9. Um, one of the reasons that we can interpret it that way is, again, going back to thinking about trading one operation out for another, or maybe in this case just making an operation more explicit. <coughs> to put a negative sign in front of something, I'm going to introduce an x here just for the sake of this discussion. Right? To put a negative sign in front of something really means... It really means the opposite of x. Let me sort of ease our way into that, for starters. Opposite of. So again, when I write down that <laughs> minus sign with an expression that follows it, what I really mean is the opposite of, the additive inverse of. Right? So if x is positive, then minus x is going to be negative. If x is negative, minus x is going to be positive. Right? It just flips the sign from positive to negative or vice versa. But mathematically, that's the same thing that we can accomplish by multiplication of that number by negative 1. So here's similar to how before you were imagining that 1 in front of the parentheses to, to get rid of the parentheses. Well, having a minus in front of a quantity really means negative 1 times that quantity. And that introduces a hidden multiplication that then we're going to pick apart. One of the cues that I have when I'm looking at this expression and how to interpret this dash is that there's nothing to the left of it. Right? So since there's nothing to the left of it, I won't interpret it as a subtraction because subtraction is always something minus something. Right? But if there's no something in the front, um, then this is what a computer scientist would call a unary operation. It only has one thing that it's operating upon, the thing that comes after it. Um, and in that case, that's when I, when I'm being really careful, will read it as the opposite of, rather than as subtracting or as a minus. And so to resolve this controversy, we just imagine that minus 3 squared written in the bottom fashion, minus 3 squared, is the same thing as minus 1 times 3 squared. So there's a hidden multiplication by minus 1 lurking in there. And once that's expanded out, that now gives away the game. Because what has to happen first if I'm evaluating this expression? The exponent, because it has to happen before the multiplication. And so when that exponent here happens first, that gives me negative 1 times 9, and that gives me the negative 9. So one of the best things you can do for yourself, and I'm going to have you get some practice by trying to fill in the rest of these boxes on this sheet here in a minute. One of the best things you can do is, is to develop that sensitivity to what is the difference when a negative comes inside of a, a quantity which is being squared versus when there are no parentheses. And then here, the negative sits implicitly on the outside of the squaring that happens. So take a few moments. Um, you can do this with another person just to check your work, uh, to fill in the rest of the, the boxes on this table to show what is the expanded notation for these things look like. So if I were to expand out negative 2 to the power of 4 using these parentheses, how would I do that? And then in the bottom right-hand box, uh, what's the actual value that you get when you evaluate?